I'm one of those guys where it's like, you know, if you want to do it, do it. But everything that comes with it, you got to be able to cash that check, you know? Don't start crying because, you know, you fucking looped yourself or, you know, God forbid you actually get in an accident. Um, you know, it's it comes with the territory, so if you believe in yourself and you're confident and you're actually going to get out there and practice and not be a fucking squid with no skill, then yeah, start on a 600. <clears throat> Yo, what is up guys? Here for another video. It was super nice today, so I'm like, you know what? Let me let me get out here and get this get this going. So we're going to be doing like, should you start on a 600, yes or no? Uh, I mean, just to save you guys the time, I think you should start on a 600, but if you want to know like my talking points and stuff, you know, stick around and support. I really appreciate that. So I guess first of all, it would be like, what's your purpose for the bike? You know, are you commuting to work? Are you going to be riding around with friends? What kind of bikes do your friends have? Because that will really determine, um, you know, how much enjoyment you might get out of it. You know, if you're a big person that wants to be with their friends a lot and you have a 300, I'm telling you, it's not going to be, you're not going to have the best time. You're going to be getting left. Um, it's really hard for anybody with a bigger bike to not just get up and go. It kind of sucks, you know. I rode a couple people who have groms and stuff and I almost always end up dusting them at some point. And then like, you know, I get a hold of myself and I'm like, okay, let me, uh, let me slow down and stuff for them. But, you know, same thing with the 300. You're not really going to be, you don't have that get up and go power. Uh, if you're going to be doing any kind of highway runs, uh, I don't suggest get a 300 unless you're like super close to the exit. Or maybe you're in one of those cities where it's like, it's mainly all highway, but they're like so close. You might be able to manage with that, but even then it's like, eh, I still don't really suggest it. I mean, even with the 600, I have the power, but I'm ringing, I'm ringing out my six gear a little bit, and I don't necessarily like it too much. Wait, what is it talking about? Ah, the ergonomics. It's a committed position. Um, even if you lower the rear sets and all that jazz, like you're still very committed to this kind of position, um, and that can be, as you're starting out, that can be really taxing on your back and your wrist if you don't have proper riding positions i know my wrist used to be in so much pain because i was just putting all my weight on the uh handlebars and it sucked um you know you're riding every day like you just compile that kind of weight or compile that kind of taxation on your wrist it, it adds up and uh the weight of the bike um 300s are a lot lighter a lot more flickable yeah, you'll be able to do, I mean, you might feel more comfortable in a 300. The 600s, I mean, when I first got on mine, my Jixxer, I was like, damn, dude, this thing is heavy. I didn't realize how heavy bikes were until I finally sat on it. And I'm like, holy shit, this is a lot of weight. It's literally just a, a torpedo and this thing floats. <clears throat> but next would be like the usable speed. Um, 300s, I've never ridden a 300, but I can't see how... You have any kind of get up and go speed you can't i don't think you can really pull yourself out of situations just because you don't have the torque and you don't have you know any top speed so maybe someone's chasing you not saying like cops but just people road rage you might not you might not be able to get away you know even on a 600 like cars can still keep up with you and you might get them in the beginning but towards the later half you know they might catch you but um it the 300s do have a lot more I guess usable speed in the city but when you get out into the highway you'll quickly see like even with the 600 you're kind of maxing out your usable speed so the usable speed aspect that i'm thinking of is more of like you know slow maneuvers it's going to be a lot easier with the 300 um and this is going to compile with your progression i feel like you can progress a lot quicker on a 300 cc bike than you ever than you will on a 600 and i'm not saying this is for everybody or verbatim but because it's lighter it's going to be easy to turn so you'll learn your slow maneuvers a lot quicker um on a 300 that's just my personal opinion you know i started on a 600 so i can't i don't necessarily know 
but I do know the slow maneuvers I picked them up fairly easy but I know people who've had trouble with um, the slow maneuvers and stuff like that so there's just something to think about <clears throat> if you um, if you want to go the 600 route and I do feel like you can really push the 300s a lot more than you're willing to push the 600 this is a lot of a bike this is a beast of a bike to have in between your legs the power that this thing has throughout the rev limits and throughout all the it's just insane especially on the jixers you have so much usable torque all throughout the power band and that's kind of like the the main point of getting a 600 is like what is your throttle control and do you have any you know what i mean do, do you have any concept of how this throttle can really fuck you um and honestly i'm one of those kind of guys that are like you know if you want to start on a 600 or a 1000 go for it you know what i mean but the consequences of that you have to be prepared to accept that this shit can really mess you up you know i'm in sixth gear and i can really just through the throttle and catch up to all these people because there's so much usable torque in the jixers um throughout the power range or the power band and this thing is actually very like not in first gear this thing is pretty touchy but first and second like you can find yourself into some trouble if you're not careful and especially in some of these turns and corners you know if you're doing these corners in third gear like i do most of the time um you know you need to have that steady control or you're gonna be uh setting yourself up for a real effed up day like cycle cruiser would say <clears throat> And it's more of like, more or less, like, do you trust yourself to, to have that control and to, and to actually get out there and practice? Everybody says like, oh, they'll practice in the parking lot. Trust me, bro. You're going to practice in the parking lot for like maybe two weeks or so. But after that, you're going to be out here on the road and you're not even going to think about practicing again. Um, and I will say riding on the street is not practice unless you are mentally thinking about it and thinking about what you're doing you're not actively practicing like right now i'm just cruising yeah i'm riding the bike and getting like the reps in getting some xp in but i'm not really practicing anything right now you know what i mean like when i get to some turns i practice just because like i'm slowly preparing myself for track days so i kind of set up my body position and how i enter the turn and exit the turn um, for track so like that and that's mentally on my mind as I go about it but other than that I don't necessarily like getting out here and riding isn't really practice like yes you're getting comfortable but you're not really practicing um, and that's kind of the best way I can put it so if you don't really have that I guess determination to really get out there and and actually practice and learn and repetit and get that muscle memory for your throttle like you're gonna end up in trouble eventually and it may not be just because you pulled the throttle too hard it could be because maybe you're getting a little throttle happy maybe you're starting to pick up some speed you know you're picking up some speed and you can't handle it and then you end up uh i don't know you end up on the side of the road you end up hitting a wall a gate a fence whatever just because you know you decide to do you held the throttle a little longer than uh what you should what you should have <clears throat> i think the resale value also like for the most part if you buy you know a 600 you'll be able to resell it and get at least most of your money back if not more but with the 300s if you buy that thing new you're never gonna recoup that cost uh just never it's just not practical like honestly the 300s literally sell for like a thousand five hundred six hundred like uh, most of them i see are under two grand and it doesn't matter how new that bike is they mainly all sell like at that price point uh so if you buy one used like you definitely can make your money back if not make you know a little bit extra the 600s kind of hold their value a lot more um and that's something to think about too and that also goes in with the price um overall the 600s are going to cost you a lot more 
Uh, and, and even in the long run, it's going to cost you a lot more when you think about, like, you know, the tire difference, um, how much fuel you're going to be using, uh, especially your insurance if you're young. Um, overall, your first, your first year riding may cost you more uh, than what it would on a 300. And that's something to think about, too. I know a lot of college people want to get motorcycles and stuff just to commute to college as well. So maybe if you want to save a little bit of money, you're not going to be hitting the highway and stuff. That 300 might be, might be perfect for you. And uh, lastly, would have to be um, your progression, your next steps. Like, what is your next bike after a 600? You're probably not going to go to a 750. You're not going to go to, like, the 900s or... Actually, the 900s isn't bad because that's what I'm looking forward to is the R9. Because um, I, don't, I don't like the newer Jixxers. I don't like the newer Jixxers, even the 1000. Like, the 1000 is better, but I sat on it. I don't really like how it feels. Don't like the ZX-10R. I don't like how that feels. So I'm thinking the R9 might be what I might go with. But what's your progression? Like you're going from 600 to 1,000. That's a decent leap, you know. <clears throat> 300 to 600. It's a little more shallow, you know, a little more forgiving. Um, and you can kind of get more ride time and get used to that bike, you know what I mean? Like, okay, you go into 300, you get used to it, you get tired of it, and it goes to 600. You have a lot more elapsed time of riding in your entire career to get used to that 600 before you go into the 1000. Whereas, you might get to 600 and be like me, damn near, you know, four months of consistent straight riding, and I'm like, damn, I kind of... I want something a little more zoomy, you know? Um, and I'm being disciplined enough, like I'm waiting for the, I'm saying I'm waiting for the R9. I do want the S1K as well. I just don't want to pull the trigger on that thing because I really want to learn how to lean this bike. Um, like really lean, I'm like knee dragging leaning, you know what I mean? So, and I know for sure I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna practice that on the, on the S1K. Yeah, I don't even want to press set on my 600, honestly. But, um, that's kind of it. Like, my thoughts on starting on a 600 and whether you should or shouldn't. I'm one of those guys where it's like, you know, if you want to do it, do it. But everything that comes with it, you got to be able to cash that check, you know? Don't start crying because, you know, you fucking looped yourself or... You know, God forbid you actually get in an accident. Um, you know, it it's comes with the territory. So, if you believe in yourself and you're confident and you're actually going to get out there and practice and not be a fucking squid with no skill, then yeah, start on a 600. Whoa. But, you know, if you're not, get a 300, play it safe. Simple as that. Uh, that's my thought, guys. You know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, if anybody else is excited for our R9, you know, let me know, because I think the R9 is going to be great. But anyway, that's all, guys. I'll catch you later.